All right, folks, let's go ahead and get started. We'll go ahead and create our new project in Storyline. So we're actually gonna build this completely from the ground up. Now, a couple things real quick. I'm gonna work with Storyline's default slide size. Slide size, aspect ratio, 720 by 540. That's totally fine for what we're doing. If you wanna customize your project and use a different size or aspect ratio, just click the design tab and then the story size button. Here you can actually select either uh, widescreen or default, and then you can also obviously customize your own. But uh, for this example, we're just gonna work exactly uh, with what we're given when we first start a new project. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drill into the slide. We're gonna build this entire interaction on a single slide. And I have two background graphics that I am gonna work with. One is the default background, which is the full resolution, just the game board, the little travel image. And then I also have the blurred version of that, which I'll use when we uh, dive into uh, each of the questions and feedback. So I'm gonna apply those both to the background slide masters. I uh, don't have to do that because it's a single slide, but uh, just the more I can get off my slide and move it to the back, uh, the better. Just frees up uh, and keeps my slide that much cleaner. So under the view tab, I have two masters. I have a slide master and a feedback master. Go ahead and just start with the slide master, which is gonna apply um, that to design to this current layout. And I'm gonna go ahead and just import that image that I already built. So insert picture. And here I have uh, already prepared two graphics. One uh, is the normal background and then one is the blurred. So I'm gonna insert the normal one. There we go. And I'm gonna make a couple uh, changes here real quick. First thing I wanna do is just add my little banner graphic here over it, my title. And this is more just of a cosmetic type change here, but I uh, just wanna choose that, no outline. And then we'll just call this travel game. And of course, this is all fully editable. If you wanted to make your own uh, graphic, you can certainly do that. And I'll move that to the left. Good enough. And I'm gonna copy this, Control C, Control V, remove my text, and I'll bring this down to the bottom. So just setting this up, and I'll kind of reproduce, mo reuse most of this for uh, the slide layer. Here's a really neat shortcut. I wanna, I wanna get a precise uh, height for this. Rather than right-clicking this and choosing size and position, I can choose Control Shift Enter, and here I can access this pretty quickly. So maybe 10. And just nudge it in bottom. And I'll line it to the bottom of the slide. And that's all set up right there. So this is all just fine. Now what I wanna do is also apply the same overall uh, graphics to my feedback layers. And since I already have these two in place right here, um, I'm gonna select two of those, Control C to copy them, jump back up here to my slide master, and I'm gonna exit uh, the master view. And you can see how that automatically applied that graphic to my current slide design. But I also want to make another change, and that's to the feedback master, which will apply to any of the layers that we create over here for the questions and feedback. So just choose feedback master. And I'm gonna add one right here. So control V to paste those graphics that I had pasted. And I'm gonna go ahead and insert a different graphic this time, uh, the blurred version of that background. There it is, double click it, right click and choose send to back. And now I have the blurred version of it. Now I also wanna set up two more slide layers, one for the correct feedback and one for the incorrect. And we don't have any of that set up yet, but I know that that's how I want this to play out, so it makes sense to uh, add these right now. So I'm gonna right click this and choose Rename Layout, and I'll call this one Question Slide. So this will be the, the slide that we use when we, when we drill down into the questions. I'm gonna duplicate it, and I'm gonna call this one Correct. And to correct it, I'm going to change the colors. So Format, and fill it with my red. Actually, these should be green because it's correct. So let me choose that back up there. And I'll type in correct. Okay, 
and right click this one and I will choose duplicate one more time and we'll make the incorrect version of it. So I'll select uh, both of those graphics. We'll just fill those with the red and then I'll just change that here. Last thing I wanna do is just add that feedback box. Now again, if you feel like this is, is too restrictive for what you wanna do, then you can always add this at the slide level. But because I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna use the same feedback slides and layers for each, to me it makes sense to actually uh, set this all up ahead of time and then I don't have to worry about uh, changing any of this as I build out my project. And just right click and just add about 20% Transparency. Other thing I want to do is just make sure this is centered on my slide. Go up to the align and see how it already has it selected to align to slide. It's only one object. Align to center and it makes sure it's in position. Control C to copy it. Come back over here, paste that in place. And the last thing I'll do is just add some default text that says uh, click here add correct feedback here. And this will just create the placeholder text for me for uh, this slide, and then I'll do it right down here for this one. All right, so one more time, add incorrect feedback here. So that covers three different slides, the question slide, and then correct, correct uh, feedback, and then incorrect feedback. So go ahead and close out of here. And I don't see those changes here, but I will see the options once I create my, uh, my layers, but I'm not ready to do that yet. At this point, I probably a good idea to just save my file. So I'll go ahead and save it. And obviously I have some practice versions right here, but I'll call this one. Travel game tutorial, save it in the project folder, and we're pretty much set for uh, setting up our initial project.